Oh god, this hurts, because I was a day one founder of this game. Got the Platinum Dragon pet to prove it too. I was a guardian, I was a dragon amulet holder. Subjectively, I love Adventure Quest Worlds, but objectively, it's so bad. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. I'm Josh Strife Hayes. I've spent years playing the best MMO games available. Now it's time to do the opposite and find the worst of the worst. I'm going to play them all so you don't have to. Join me on my journey through the most awful MMOs I can find. Drop a like on the vid, sub to the channel, and ring the bell so you don't miss a single video. Remember, you can join the live premiere of new videos at 8pm Monday and Thursday. If you're enjoying the series so far and would like it to continue, please consider supporting through the Patreon like all these awesome people have. You'll find the link in the description below. Today, we are playing Adventure Quest Worlds. Some of you probably felt that rush of nostalgia and shouted, Wait, you mean Adventure Quest, that 2D side-scrolling flash animation game? Why, yes, dear viewer, I do. This is a bit of an odd one, so let's take a quick look at how this game came to be. Many years ago, there was a free flash animation single-player online RPG called Adventure Quest. It was basic but charming. Described as a lunch break size RPG, you travelled by clicking from screen to screen, and the combat was all handled through a turn-based click and wait system. It was simple, but did have its merits. If you wanted, you could pay to become a guardian and gain access to more content. I, of course, did this. Then Dragon Fable happened. Same basic concept, but now there was movement within screens and the combat system was much more fleshed out. You could change class by switching armor, setting each class had unique attacks. You could also buy a dragon amulet to access more content. I, of course, did this also. Then Dragon Fable brought out a super overpowered armor set you had to pay like 50 quid for and could only buy one piece every six months, so of course I did this as well. Are you seeing a pattern with how much I like these games? Then Adventure Quest Worlds was announced. All the thrill of 2D side-scrolling flash animation combat, but now with other people. And if you joined up day one as a founder, you got a sweet platinum dragon pet, and you can bet your frogzard covered Sneevel I absolutely did this. Now, you can still play this game, but it's made in Flash, which, as we know, is going away and not being supported anymore. So you'll need to download the Artix Game Launcher. This also contains all the other games they've made, in case you fancied replaying the original Adventure Quest. So Adventure Quest Worlds, it's a Flash-based MMO. It's available through the Artix Launcher, and it's free, mostly. So let's give it a go. First off, Lockdown has been kind to this game. There are still several servers alive, and sometimes they even fill up. This is probably the most populated game I've played so far on Worst MMOs Ever. Look, it's my super rare Founders Dragon, but I will not be playing on this account. I feel that'd be unfair. I want the new player experience, so let's make a brand new character. You've got four basic classes to choose from, but you'll very, very quickly unlock more classes, so this isn't really an important choice. There is a healing class, but until you hit the end game content, if you ever actually manage that, you'll want to focus on solo DPS. You can switch your hair and eyes like any other Artix game. Intro cutscene plays. God, this is giving me so much nostalgia. Remember Flash Animation, New Grounds, Two Flash Games? Ah, oh, good times. The early story is focused around the 13 Lords of Chaos. This evil looking guy is Sepulchre. He wants to take over the world because he is evil. He sends a flying giant skeleton dragon fortress to burn the city down. And oh my god, look at those fire graphics. I miss Flash Animation so much. We meet Squire Ash in Oaklaw Forest and the game starts. The game world is divided into screens and you move around within a screen by clicking. First thing that strikes me is how messy and non-uniform this UI looks. The text box to the bottom left spills onto the screen. The enemies all have brightly coloured names over them, the bottom right menu selection seems to be a different scale to everything else. The screen just looks instantly untidy. So combat, you double click on an enemy, you'll start auto attacking. You can use abilities by clicking them or pressing the numbered keys. Each class has five abilities. Killing an enemy gives you experience and gold, basic stuff so far. But you'll notice how damn fast enemies respawn. They used to have a much, much slower respawn timer, but players complained it took too long to farm things, so they went the other way and enemies now instantly pop back up once they're dead. Anyone with a red exclamation mark button above them likely has a quest, talk to them, etc. 
set the quest and off you go. To move from screen to screen, look for the golden pointed arrow on the floor and run toward it. Some items, like this chest, are clickable. This one lets us know if we reach level 10 in 24 hours we'll get a special sword and let's just mention the artwork. It runs the entire spectrum from primary school finger painting bad to absolutely gorgeous print it and frame it perfect. Artix games have some of the nicest 2D sprites I've ever seen. From complex weapon design to intricate armour, but you will notice, especially at higher level, a hell of a lot of asset reuse and palette swapping going on. We'll get to that later. Complete the first quest, open the list and turn it in. We get experience, but again, let's look at levelling. You as a character level up, but you'll also level up whatever class you currently are separately. It's your class level which unlocks new class abilities, so you could be level 50, start a new class and be considered class level 1 while still being character level 50. Finally meet Artix, the in-game representation of the company's main man, Adam, and from everything I've read about this guy, he actually sounds like a really nice dude. Also, random fact, you can find a video of his wedding online and it is the most awesome, geeky thing I've seen. There are ninjas, there's Batman, it's just brilliant. He tells me to go and kill some stuff in a practice arena and offers to teleport me there and this will happen a lot and it weakens the game. Often NPCs or dialogue will just send you to wherever you need to be and while it saves time, it also means the player has no idea how the world actually connects. We don't have to experience the journey from A to B so we have no idea how far it is from A to B or where we are in the world in relation to the overall world. Despite the fact you can choose to manually explore if you want to, the teleport option is almost always given to you and a new player will almost always click it. It makes each screen feel disconnected from a collective, like single rooms connected through teleports instead of an actual place you can journey around. Now here is the single biggest issue with the game. There are lots of issues, but this is the one that sticks out in my mind the most. My quest is to kill five enemies, pretty simple. And every time I kill one, I get an item added to my temporary inventory. This is how the game tracks how many I've killed, but the clue is in the name, temporary. Notice how the quest is now complete, but I've not handed it in. Well, if I log out, then back in, the temporary inventory is empty, and the quest list is now blank. This game does not save your quests or your progress on those quests between sessions, meaning if you accept a long and tedious quest, you've got to finish it all in one sitting. You can't log out for five minutes and come back. That would reset your progress. This is the worst system in the whole game. I feel I could put forward a pretty convincing argument for this being the worst system in almost any MMO. The very idea that you can accept a quest, do the quest, then log out before handing it in and the game just forgets is insane. And remember that even accepting some of these quests, getting to the character that gives them to you, requires long and complex journeys to places in specific orders or going through long dialogue trees. It's mental to think that a proper MMO game doesn't have quest memory. If you do manage to finish a quest, you'll usually get an item. To the game's credit, each item does have a different visual appearance. Equipping anything changes how you look, but Here's a major thing the game does to convince you to become a paying monthly member. Certain items or equipment can only be used by members and trying to equip it will show you this, the upgrade screen, and the game has no problem just showering new or free players with members items to irritate them into upgrading. There's nothing worse than having an inventory full of awesome stuff you're not allowed to use. If you do want to upgrade, it's $58 for the year or $20 for three months. I mean, it's cheaper than most MMOs, but it's not exactly nothing. Tutorial continues, we're shown how to buy stuff, pretty simple shop interface, then we're taken to Cicero the enchantment trainer. Enchanting raises the level of an item and is done in a stupidly long-winded way. You have to find the correct leveled scroll in the shop. So level 1 to 2, 2 to 3, 3 to 4, 4 to 5, whatever your level is going to. Then buy that for the item you are leveling. You can't just click on the item you want improved and click enchant. I'm guessing this was a limitation of working within Flash. Alina then sells us potions. You can only buy one at a time and you have to manually go into your inventory to equip them to a hotkey and you can only have one potion type equipped at once. Alina is also the person you'll talk to if you ever tweet at this game. If you're not fighting stuff, you can also get health back and mana back by just 
sitting down on the ground. Break this wall by clicking on it and earn the interaction badge. I'd argue everything we've done so far has been some kind of interaction, because this is a game, but I guess you know best game. Going through the wall, we're now outside in a completely irrelevant area, and this really shows what Arctic's games both exceed and fail at. This whole area is pointless. There's a funny animation of a knight flinging himself away on a catapult and a short cutscene where you can run up to someone in an outhouse and knock it down a hill. It's very lol random waffles KT to penguin of doom holds up spork humour. It's entertaining and fun to do once, but it's also completely unrelated to anything else in the game. It's just a distraction. Now, the writing in Arctic's games is usually top notch. The humour and puns and very British wit are great. It's very self aware, and there's a lot of fourth wall breaking, which I personally love, but there's so many parts of the game that are just irrelevant and so lol random that you never know if you're actually making progress or just walking into an extended joke. It's very loose in terms of what is plot and what isn't. Faith teaches us how to use the chat function by teaching us a dance, and now armed with the power of sweet funky moves, we leave the keep. A cutscene of legions of undead attacking the keep with cameos of all the famous adventure quest characters we know and love plays out, then Galanoth the Dragon Slayer tells us to slay a mighty red dragon. Wow, slight jump in difficulty here, game. Now, when this game released, there were lots of people doing this quest at the same time, and you actually needed other people to help you win, but now you can just hit it. To the game's credit, you do need to use your abilities to win this fight. You can't just stick on auto attack and wait. We win, then the skeletal dragon flies off to attack the city, and we need to go and save them. This lady offers us a free shop, but all the items are level 5, so I do some grinding. I do a lot of grinding, so let's talk about the grinding. This game has a ton of grinding, either to level up or find super rare quest items or to gather materials to unlock super powerful classes. The grind is so, so extreme that the Adventure Quest World's subreddit just openly discusses botting in the game. It's one of the few MMOs where you could say to the community, yeah, I botted for that, and most players would just nod back at you and go, that's understandable. Reach level 5, get a free sword from the shop. Speak to Warlick for a cutscene. He explains the evil sepulchre is attacking Swordhaven, and King Ultion the Good needs us to go and save him. Standard hero stuff so far. Now we're told to use the world map, and again, I have some problems with this. The game, as you've seen, is divided into screens, and most screens can be accessed instantly from the world map, but not all of them. Sometimes you need to go to a place and manually walk to a secret place, or you need to access an older version of the screen that still exists in a quest line but isn't linked to via the map. But you won't know any of this, and map travel is so much faster than anything else, you've basically got no reason to walk around places ever. It's also inconsistent, but my god, we will get to that later. This is the main town of Batalon, same as the original Adventure Quest. You'll find most players here or standing AFK inside Yulgar's Inn. I don't think any long-time players will be offended when I say most people are still standing here because they've already spent so long standing here. And it's easy to keep making a mistake once you've committed such a darn long time to making it so far. There are a hell of a lot of question marks here, and clicking them all will send you off on random disjointed adventures, but if you click this little book of lore, you'll be able to open the 13 Lords of Chaos chapter and play through the whole story in order from the beginning. It's a good thing I knew this, because a new player might be rather confused. But even this has problems. Going to the first screen of the first part of the first quest has a cleric standing by a portal. Talking to her opens either a shop or sends us off to stop an undead invasion, which throws us to this screen, with Rabina Hood fighting off a load of hawks. And we can accept some hawk-slaying quests, but none of this actually relates to the main storyline quest. It's just a side quest. But you wouldn't know that unless you, like I have, have done this quest before. So back to the castle we go. Talk to this knight and accept the quest to kill four skeletal mages to open the gate. Thankfully, there's a mage right next to us, and here begins the repetition. 
Almost every single quest in this game is a reskin of kill X, collect X, or talk to X amount to continue. I log out for lunch and then when I come back, as usual, I'm placed back into the main town because of course this game doesn't remember your position either and all my quests and progress are lost. So I need to reopen the Book of Lore, head back to the castle, talk to the knight and kill the four mages all over again. Oh, also your potions unequip whenever you log out. Now, you don't have to play through the story. You can just go and grind stuff or see whatever the latest event is. We'll do that later. But this is the new player experience, so we're doing this now. I kill four mages, open the gate, and Artix now needs ten skeletons killed. So I kill ten, there's no real challenge here, it's just time consuming. Now he needs ten wizard skeleton killed, so I go and do that. There's only one spawn point on this screen, but as I'm the only player here, it's not really a problem. Mage is killed, now to kill an undead giant. Tees up a few screens and is just a damage sponge with no interesting mechanics. In fact, almost no early game combat encounters have any mechanics at all beyond use all your abilities whenever you can. I get a cool lance drop from the giant, but oh, it's a member's item. Same for the cool helmet it drops, so I can't equip either of them. Head into the castle, watch a short cutscene, and talk to Rabina Hood. She needs me to go and talk to five knights. While I appreciate all the knight names are puns, I always like a good pun, I don't appreciate how the enemy has no aggro and will never attack you first. So my epic adventure through a skeleton-infested castle is more of a casual stroll. Report back, now we need to kill 12 skeletons. Oh, it's getting repetitive. Combat is so brain dead. Clicking on an enemy locks you on, and when the enemy dies and respawns, you actually stay locked on, meaning I can just look away from the screen and keep pressing any of the numbered abilities, and I'll keep winning. I just keep spamming the 2 key, and I win. We finally kill 12 and go to the throne room. King Ultion the Good asks me if I'm good or evil. Strangely, he's absolutely chill no matter what you say. If you answer good, he's all like, yeah, that's cool. And if you say evil, he's like, well, that's not my personal choice, but you do you. Sepulchre shows up and just straight up disintegrates a dude. Then King Ultion and Sepulchre fight. I choose to side with good, but it doesn't really matter because then we meet Drakath. Drakath is neither good nor evil, he embodies chaos. Now, Sepulchre can't die because he's undead, but apparently Drakath just straight doesn't care about that and rips out his very essence and shatters it. While this is happening, Gravelin, Sepulchre's daughter, is watching from the Flying Dragon Castle. Drakath sees this and blows the dragon up, causing it to crash into the ground. Quest finished, we can now access a shop, but everything in it is members. Remember, if you want to access this shop again once you become a member, you'll need to go through the whole quest again. Amazingly, the king isn't dead and says, hey, maybe you should go and talk to Gravelin, Sepulchre's daughter. She did just see her dad get imploded by Drakath. Maybe she's rightly pissed off and will join us in the fight against him. That actually makes a lot of sense as a plan, so I journey on over and have a chat to Gravelin. Quick note, while this game may not have a lot of players, it sure has a lot of very, very not safe for work Gravelin fan art, so Google that at your own risk. I love how sarcastic our replies are here. I know most people don't like playing sarcastic characters because it's not how they are in real life, but this is exactly how I would respond to these problems. Gravelin says she needs some Doom Knight armor from a crypt, so we go and get it. This is the first time we're shown the defeat all enemies to continue message. Now enemies respawn instantly, so it doesn't mean clear the screen, it means kill every enemy on the screen at least once. So you might be wondering, hey, what would happen if I logged out? How would I get back here? Could I just use the map to travel to the crypt? Well, yes and no. Yes, because you can indeed travel to the crypt using the map, but no, because it might not be this specific version of the crypt map you end up at. It might be a more modern updated one and not linked to this quest. The only way to guarantee you return to this exact map would be to repeat the King's Quest, travel to Gravelin, have her teleport you as before, or... And this is a much more old school method. You can type slash join, then the exact map name to go there. So if you're really into writing stuff down or just don't want to go through the hassle of retracing steps, that is an option. Most players use this to travel to the best farming locations, experience gaining places, or to go and hunt for rare item drops. Fight past all the Chaos Corrupted Knights, which the game shortens to Corrupted. Fight an animated version of Sepulchre's armor and die. Death isn't a big deal at all. You just re spawn at the starting screen of the quest. This fight actually needs me to use my abilities and my potions, which I suppose is at least some levels of tactics. 
Return to Gravelin, she is happy with the armour and now needs us to go and collect the unlife insurance that Sepulchre had on himself. See? More lol random humour. The game lets us teleport straight to the insurance holder because travelling around a rich and vibrant world is for losers. The tax collector then tells us the policy was for one trillion gold and he only gave it out as he assumed Sepulchre would never die. He's also not willing to pay this out and so we are thrown into the dungeon. To escape we have to fight a sink. I'm not kidding, you have to break this wall and the sink keeps squirting water at you for a very small amount of damage. We escape the cell and fight through the guards. Why? Why are these guards against me? We are clearly on the same side. I am working on the king's orders to help someone who's trying to claim a sum of money that they're legally entitled to. I have done nothing wrong. Get back to the tax collector and his bodyguard is a giant pig drake that looks like a piggy bank. We kill it and take the gold from the treasury. Then we use the gold that we just picked up to buy the insurance bond? I don't quite understand the transfer of wealth that just happened there. Head back to Gravelin, hand in the bond and the game weirdly glitches. Continuing the conversation just replays the same unlife insurance quest. You need to actually close the dialogue box, then restart it for the game to catch up. Report all this back to the king, he asks us to go back to the crypt and help those corrupted knights. Oh, reusing areas and maps already game? For shame. We have to kill 10 knights, which is time consuming but easy. Then back to the king, he now sends us off to the forest because there have been reports of chaos wolves and chaos bears and we need to deal with this. Dude, you've got like a million guards. Can't you just send one of them? Why do I need to go? In the forest I kill seven wolves and then one bear. The bear is sort of a mini boss, but also sort of not. It's just bigger with more health. Back to the king, he tells us a messenger from the marsh arrived and he's reported odd effects of eating chaos plants on chaos creatures. Some of them die, some of them return to normal. So now we're off to the marsh and this is where normal players will stop. Because this is boring. Not the story, that's actually quite serviceable, but the gameplay loop and the inconsistency in graphical choices. Let me explain. There are three quests to accept here. Collect 20 sebacea, 20 marsh grass and kill 15 spiders. The collection quests are also completed by killing enemies who drop the thing that you need. This is the first really grindy section. And remember, you can't stop halfway. You'd lose all progress if you do. So no logging out or going AFK for more than five minutes. And here's a question. If you were to log out, how do you think you'd get back here? Map travel to the swamp? Or no, that sends you to a different version of the swamp, not this quest version. How about slash join swamp? No, again, because this isn't the swamp. This is the very specific map slash join chaos swamp. And if you didn't know that, the only way back here is to head back to the king, ask about the quest, accept the swamp quest, and have him teleport you here. Are you seeing why this feels disjointed? I die in the swamp, which sends me back to the first screen, which is actually kind of useful because I can hand in what I've done so far and unlock a new quest. Hooray, I'm level 8. Now I need to go and get a description of a monster. Now, the description isn't just looking at it. The description is actually an item dropped by this miniboss, but it's not a guaranteed drop. So I have to fight him twice. Then I head back, and here is a major mistake. I accidentally ran too close to the edge and I changed screens. So you'd assume I can just run back to the opposite edge. But no, because I ran into the actual marsh and the game thinks I'm now in the most updated version of the marsh. So returning to that side of the screen doesn't send me back to the chaos marsh anymore. Because the updated map doesn't link back to an older quest instance, which is what I was doing. So it's a bloody good thing I know slash join Chaos Marsh, or I'd be rather annoyed right now. I do all the quests in the Chaos Marsh and... Now what? There's nothing new. This guy has nothing for me. I even return to the king and fill him in and he just sends me back to the Chaos Marsh again. Still nothing. The main quest thread seems to just end here. There's no plot hook to grab me and move me along. Thankfully, again, I know I can go to Map, then Story, then click Chaos Lord Escheron to move forwards. But imagine not knowing this. Imagine how a new player would feel right now. Completely directionless in a world 
that feels completely disconnected. I get logged out for being AFK while going to grab a drink and I return to the main town because remember the game doesn't remember your in-game location or quests. So again, open the map, then story, then first Chaos Lord, then teleport. I accept multiple quests while I'm here and this whole thing just feels hollow. It's like I'm doing these things because someone has asked me to do them, but I have no desire or drive or motivation, either in character or out, to actually do any of these things. The game asks me if I want to go to the fairy forest and honestly, game, I don't know. Do I want to go? I don't think so, no. The world map is open to you from the start. You'd think this means a huge feeling of freedom, but it's kind of the opposite. It's actually an overwhelming feeling of directionless emptiness. If you can instantly go anywhere, then the act of being somewhere has no actual value. No effort needed to achieve getting to a location means no feeling of reward for being in the location, and with no simple to follow central plot hooking and driving us towards certain places, it just ends up feeling like a big empty world full of big empty screens with no reason to be in any of them. The Island of Yokai. Isn't that a TV show about some watches? The world of Adventure Quest feels fake. It feels frozen, waiting for you to come along and affect it. Like nothing matters outside of you being here and when you're gone, nothing will continue to matter. Maybe I'm judging the old content and should look at some of the newer content. This game does still get weekly releases, so let's have a look at those. The latest plot hook tells me Drakath is plotting a return. Of course, because once you've established one decent villain, you can never have them truly win or lose, can you? Just endlessly recycle him like a Saturday morning kids cartoon show. Oh, seems I can't do the weekly thing because I haven't finished the saga of confronting Drakath for the first time. And I can't confront Drakath despite being able to travel to that map because I haven't finished the Twelve Lords of Chaos storyline. Okay, you know what, I'll just open the map and go somewhere random. The Castle of Bone, that sounds cool. The Castle of Bones seems to be a new plotline disconnected from anything else, and the intro cinematic is trying way, way too hard to be cool and edgy. We're shown a table of ultra-powerful evil people sitting around discussing how amazingly badass I am and how much of a thorn in their side I have been. This is awful. This is bad writing and bad design. I've been playing for about seven hours. I've done none of what they're talking about. I haven't earned this level of fame or notoriety. I'm not dangerous, and yet the game just assumes I am. This is a payoff with no setup and so feels empty. It's a meeting and it has no substance because I have no connection to any of the people at it. This is what happens when you plough your plot and Mary Sue characterization forward regardless of the actual player's progress. There's also a lol random Sneevel that pops in holding a giant toothbrush and makes jokes about wanting banana flavour underwear. I'm sure 12 year old me would have giggled. I can understand why most endgame players choose to AFK in Yilgar's Inn, because it makes the most sense. And we haven't even begun to talk about the excessive premium currency or spinning the roulette wheel and maybe getting something good, because gambling and premium currency pushing in this game deserves its own video. So now let's discuss my final gripe with the game. An artistic decision that makes it almost unplayable. There is zero graphical consistency between most systems. This is how one map looks. This is another. This is how one storyline is presented. This is another. And another. And another. Notice that beyond colour scheme and general aesthetic, there is almost no cohesion between these screenshots. They all operate and look completely different. If you ignored the matching colours, they look like they're from different games. Artix Entertainment has the core of a decent MMO with Adventure Quest Worlds, but the way the maps are linked, how the quests don't follow on very well, how the storyline seems to actively fight against being followed, it all just connects so poorly. Nothing flows, nothing fits, nothing is easily linked or accessible in a logical way from a connected thing. It's all so spread apart, so random. Imagine reading an amazing story, but instead of being presented to you as a book, the pages were scattered randomly around various places and you had to walk from page to page in order. And if you went to a page out of order, 
it would just say something completely different. That's how Adventure Quest Worlds is made. Decide on a graphical overlay style for the quest presentation and stick to it. Decide on a storybook presentation and stick to it. Save the quest on logout. Quest progression and position in the world as well should be remembered when I come back. Reorganise the book of lore to be much easier to follow and understand the timeline within. You shouldn't struggle with this because you did it in Dragon Fable. God, I so want this game to be good. I enjoy playing it. It's just so irritating to actually play. I feel like I'm a beta tester or I'm spending more time bug fixing or tweaking little tiny traits of the game that don't quite work and less time actually enjoying an experience that's been crafted for me. It's got so many design flaws and workarounds that you as a player need to know that a new player will never stick with it. Look, there's something special here, something possibly magical. It's unique, it's different, and it's definitely got heart, but it's so damn flawed so often. There are lots of nice touches, but even more bugs. This is a lovely looking thing with so many deep-seated issues hidden within. At a glance, it probably looks fun to spend some time with, and as a lunch break size thing, it is. But after a few hours, you'll grow sick of the issues. It looks gorgeous, and childhood me really wanted it, but ultimately, it will leave you feeling sad, because it's just hollow. Which is why the final rating for Adventure Quest Worlds is Gravelin out of 10. Cheers for watching. If you want more worst MMO ever videos, then drop a like or sub to the channel. A massive thank you to my Patreon supporters and Twitch subs who make all my videos possible. If you're enjoying the series and would like more, you can support the Patreon from only £1 a month. Comment down below with any game you think deserves the title of worst MMO, then check the video description for links to the Patreon, Twitch, Twitter and Discord. And as always, have a great day.